People always discuss finding new aspects or interpretations of films on repeat viewing. One film that does this for me is Miami Connection. I've tried to get my friends to watch it on many occasions. So in turn, I've watched it numerous times over the years, finding new aspects of the films to joke about, but also a deeper understanding of what I believe the filmmakers were trying to say. Now, before I start talking about the film, I want to make sure you take everything I say with a pinch of salt, as I may well be talking out my ass when I'm analysing these characters, because there's little to nothing in terms of characterization or emotion. Miami Connection is a 1987 action film directed by YK Kim and Richard Park. The film follows a rock band, Dragon Sound, who end up in a rivalry with a competing band, drug dealers and motorcycle ninjas, thus resulting in numerous action scenes and musical numbers. The first thing that comes to mind when discussing the film has to be its eccentricities. There is so much going on in the film that you can't keep up as an audience member. There are so many characters, all with quirky lines or scenes and the action scenes take precedent over emotional sequences, which is probably for the benefit of the cast, as for the most part, they had little to no prior acting experience. And the music? Well, what can you say? It perfectly encapsulates the tone of the film. The songs are so campy, but really catchy at the same time. The film is brilliantly ludicrous, and in anyone else's hands, it wouldn't feel the same, and it probably wouldn't be so iconic amongst cult fans. One aspect of the film that I admire is that under all of the action, the film attempts to create an emotional connection between the band members. There are five members of Dragon Sound, and the film dedicates at least one scene to developing each member. It doesn't sound like much, but with the amount they cram into this 90 minute movie, it's nice that it's given a little bit of heart. It makes it feel that teeny bit more sentimental than just being about the action. What you're able to get from these scenes is that the band members regard themselves as family. They live together. They perform together. They all attend the same college. They all have a love for Taekwondo. And on top of all of this, they're all orphans. I know. There's way too many things going on with these characters to establish anything meaningful on an emotional level, but what it does is it allows for the filmmakers to show that these characters have a connection. A Miami connection. The aspect of the film that encapsulates this the most has to be Jim's subplot. Midway through the film, it is revealed that he has a long lost father who he has been searching for. His father was former military, so Jim is awaiting a letter from the government to let him know his address. At the end of the film he receives this letter and they go to meet him by giving this character something to search for. It provides an emotionally tangible situation for the viewer to be invested in. It also works in creating tension for the finale. As they are travelling to the airport, they are ambushed by ninjas and Jim is wounded. Seeing their partner injured, this sparks a rage within Mark and John who crack and go on a rampage, slaughtering the ninjas. This also seems to add a layer to the theme of family as Taekwondo prominently teaches self-control and peace but they go against these teachings as they cannot hold back their emotions after witnessing Jim almost being killed. It shows the strength of their bond as a unit and presents how far they are willing to go to protect one another. There's other ways in which family are shown to be a strong factor. The whole feud between the band and the gangs was started over the fact that John was dating the head of the drug dealer's sister and he wasn't happy about it. As well as this, there are scenes where the head of the drug dealers and the head of the ninjas were shown as close friends, even going so far as one of the gang members referring to the two as brothers. I know that nothing is explored above surface level with these themes, but the film was successful in establishing this motif, that of the importance of unity and the idea of family, through the numerous examples it shows. I mean, it literally tells you it through the song Friends Forever. Another aspect of the film I really enjoyed was the overwhelming feeling of positivity displayed throughout. This is helped a lot by the campiness of the whole production, but there's more to it than just that. Take for instance these shots, they're all well lit, vibrant, 
and open, which is a stark contrast to other B-movies of the time. What I also appreciate isn't the reliance on gratuitous nudity or sexualized violence. There are so many films in the genre that feel it necessary to depict sexual assault and in turn nudity, which only serve to make the viewer feel uncomfortable and bad. With the Miami Connection, there isn't any of this, which makes the whole production feel cleaner and more wholesome. This theme of positivity appears to be prominent throughout the film's storyline also. The biggest aspect of this has to be with the character of Mark, played by Y.K. Kim. He and the rest of the band go against great odds in every fight, but always appear to best their opponents. This is through their connection to Taekwondo. In a scene where the band is training together, Mark is proven to be the most skilled, but in this scene, Mark also demonstrates a reversal for someone attacking him from behind with a knife. Something that isn't necessarily highlighted at that point in the film, but proves to be a major aspect of its story. The final fight between Mark and the head ninja, Mark uses the same move to defeat him. This move is off self-defense and not offense, another aspect of the film that mirrors the psychology of Taekwondo. Mark was able to stay true to himself by defeating the villain through his understanding of the martial art, which in and of itself is a positive note. I want to end this by talking about YK Kim. Before making the film, he moved to the US from Korea and began teaching Taekwondo. He built up a large following before dedicating himself to Miami Connection. He financed the film and it was made predominantly with his students and people from the neighborhood. The film ended up bankrupting him in the early stages of the production, but he still pushed on. I did not know is, is movie making it that difficult, you know. Not in even 10 days, dry out all my money. Just 10 days in? Right away, because we did not have a professional staff. He appears to be a powerhouse of a human being and someone who can't be stopped. He is still training students to this day and has built up his own Taekwondo empire. And thankfully, his positivity has finally paid off as he has been able to see his film become a cultural phenomenon. Something that not all filmmakers get. When watching Miami Connection, you can see it's campy, hilarious and all over the place, but it's also a film that means well in almost every aspect of it. From the positive themes, the representation and even the music when I watch this film, I don't see Hollywood producers thinking dollar signs. I see everyday people trying their best to help promote a positive message. It's inspiring. Anyone can create something incredible with the right motivation. Miami Connection is a train wreck, but it's a film that I love, ironically and unironically. Friends through eternity, loyalty, honesty,